it's great to have you all with us today. I am in sunny suburbs of Philadelphia here and wanted to just take a minute to introduce myself. Uh, my name is Donna Dorzinski, as Jerry mentioned. I've been in the business now for 26 years and spent 15 years in Big Pharma and the last 11 years with Just-In-Time GCP. My first 15 years were in early development, clinical operations, and these last 11 years I've been working with mid-size and small pharmaceutical companies, CROs, and investigator sites around issues of regulatory compliance. And because of this, I've had a huge focus on TMS. I am a member of the TMF Reference Model Working Group, and I recently led the Zone 4 revisions to version 3 of the Reference Model, and currently I'm serving on several of the subcommittees, so it really helps me understand the current challenges that everyone's facing in the industry related to TMF. So just to go over our learning objectives for today, we'll go through and explain what our current regulatory expectations are regarding TMF and eTMF management. We'll talk about, actually we're going to talk about lots of recent regulatory findings directed at TMF and eTMF, but as part of the objectives, we'll want you to be able to identify at least two of those. And then lastly, we're going to talk about some strategies for helping you prepare effective CAPAs that will address some of these regulatory findings. We'll be able to help you prepare in advance so as you learn about some of the regulatory findings, you can actually put process in place to prevent those findings for yourselves. And that's kind of the objective that I have with these CAPAs. So let's start by talking about a definition of the TMF. And this comes from the European Directive from 2005. The TMF is a standalone set of documentation, and it should not require additional explanation from the associated sponsor or site staff. And to give you an example of this, I experienced an inspection many years ago. It was a site inspection, and the study coordinator was out on medical leave, and we weren't able to contact her at all during this time period. And so we had to go through an inspection with basically the uh, leaders, the executive staff, the management staff, who had not been involved in the study at all. And this inspection went really, really well because this particular coordinator had really done a nice job of maintaining her site records and her regulatory documentation and her ethics documentation. Uh, and the same is true for a sponsor. So, uh, surviving an, a regulatory inspection is really easy if you have the right documentation to support that inspection. But the greatest challenge of a regulatory inspection is when the inspector asks for something and you feel like the deer in the headlights and you have no idea where you're actually going to find that, com that documentation. And, or the documentation you have isn't able to explain or answer the question that that regulator has. And so your TMF really needs to be able to stand alone to answer the questions that the inspector may have. It's also a collection of documents that allows the conduct of the trial to be evaluated, the integrity of the data, and also compliance with GCP. So historically, we think of TMF as a collection of records. But really what it is, is it's a collection of records that reflect what happened during the study. And so it's not enough that I have, I can just check all the boxes and I have everything I need. I need to have everything that actually tells the story. So it supports the story. And it's collective in the sense that it's an output from all functional areas. And so I noticed that the majority of the folks we have on the line are clinical people and quality people, and that's fantastic. But the TMF goes well beyond clinical. It's your data management, it's your biostats, it's your clinical trial material managers, it's farm vigilance. It's well beyond what we used to traditionally think of as essential documents or the TMF. So what are essential documents? Because uh, we've been hearing the term essential documents for many years. It first appeared in ICH uh, in Section 8.1, and what that says is it's documents that permit the evaluation of the conduct of the trial and the quality of the data produced. These documents serve to demonstrate compliance of the investigator, sponsor, and monitor with standards of GCP and with all applicable regulatory requirements. Well, that sounds like a lot more than just the clinical documents. However, this particular definition is then followed by a list of core content, and that's what people have come to think of as essential documents. Well, during the ICH E6 integrated addendum, which was released last summer, it's been a long-awaited document, and they've really made some valuable additions to the content. But one of the things they've added is this requirement that the sponsor investigators should maintain a record of the locations of their respective essential documents. So it's not good enough to have, we want to know where it is. And, and we know that not all TMF content is held within the quote TMF or ETMF. 
For example, most organizations have a pharmacovigilance database, and all of the safety documentation is often held within that database. And so the question becomes, well, do I need to have it in both locations? Or as long as I know where it is, is that enough? And based on this statement from ICHE6, knowing the location of a record will, will meet your regulatory requirement. However, the storage system, no matter what, what, no matter what media you use, whether it's a paper storage or it's on a thumb drive or it's on a CD or it's stored on a, a, ser a server in the cloud somewhere, there's got to be documentation that allows you to identify the document and easily search and retrieve it. So it's got to be records that you can easily find. And then depending on the activities carried out, individual trials may require additional documents not mentioned in the essential document list. And when I read this, this was just wonderful news because what ICH is saying here is that our previous definition of essential documents is just not adequate enough. We know now that the TMF goes well beyond that essential document list.